So, Alice, what do you think about the latest news on Earth's political landscape? Oh Bob, don't get me started. It's like watching a never-ending soap opera. The constant power struggles and lack of progress. It's disheartening. Well, you know me, Alice. I find it all fascinating. Humans and their political games. It's like a never-ending reality show. Reality show? Bob, this is people's live we're talking about. It's not some form of entertainment. Relax. Alice. I didn't mean to offend. I just find the drama intriguing. It's like a competition. And you know how much I enjoy a good competition. All right, everyone, hush. We are going live in three, two, one. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to another exciting episode of Earth. I am Charlie, your host, and joining me are our panel members, Alice and Bob. We've got a lot to discuss today, so let's jump right in. Today's topic is all about the influence of technology on human decision-making. How do you think it's shaping their future, Charlie? Ah, Debbie, a topic close to my heart. Technology has undoubtedly revolutionized the way humans live and make decisions. It's both thrilling and concerning, isn't it? Absolutely, Charlie. The advancement have brought numerous benefits. But there's also the risk of losing touch with our humanity in the process. I have to say, Alice, I am with Charlie on this one. Technology has its downside, sure, but it also presents endless opportunity for growth and progress. That's the spirit, Bob. We've got a lively debate ahead of us. But before we dive in, let's catch up on some headlines, shall we? Advancements in technology have given us the power to solve complex problems and binge watch cat videos. Ah, the balance of progress. And now for our headlines. Stay tuned as we delve into the fascinating world of technology and its impact on human decision. Making, you won't want to miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. I'm your host, Charlie, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, Bob and Alice. How's everyone doing today? Feeling groovy, Charlie. Just another day in the wacky world of Earth. Bonjour, Charlie. I'm doing all right, thank you. And yourself? Can't complain, Alice. Now, let's dive right into our first article of the day. It's about Estonia abolishing the pet exemption for Ukrainian refugees. The article comes from ERR and can be found at the link. Ah, Estonia. The land of forests, lakes, and now, strict pet regulation. It seems they've decided to align themselves more closely with the standard. You know, Alice, I can't help but wonder if this is a case of pause before people. I mean, why prioritize pets over the human refugees themselves? Bob, it's not about prioritizing pay. It's about ensuring the safety and well-being of both animals and humans. These regulations are in place to prevent the spread of diseases and to maintain proper documentation. Ah, Alice, the eternal protector of pets and refugees. Who needs a superhero when we have you? Cats and leashes for all. Well, it's definitely a tricky situation, and I'm sure our viewers at home have their own thoughts on the matter. But let's lighten the mood a bit, shall we? How about a little Estonian trivia? Lay it on us, Charlie. Did you know that Estonia has more than 2,000 islands? That's a lot of places to misplace your paperwork. That's true, Charlie. I'm sure our Estonian friends are used to navigating through paperwork like Bobir Navigate. Through a labyrinth of spreadsheets. Hey, I've got detective skills, Alice. If I can find a missing number in a financial report, I can find my way through any maze of paperwork. Well said, Bob. And on that note, we'll be back with more news and shenanigans after a quick commercial break. Stay tuned, folks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, guys, the cameras are off. That was a great segment, but I have something to share with you all. It seems like there's been some strange activity in my office lately. I've been noticing misplaced paperwork, and it's been driving me crazy. Really? That's odd. Maybe it's just a simple mix-up. You know, Alice, this feels more like a mystery waiting to be solved. Debbie, do you mind if I take a look at your office? I've got some detective skills up my sleeve. Oh, Bob, that would be fantastic. I can't stand this chaos anymore. And while Bob investigates, I can use my resourcefulness to gather any clues that might lead us to the culprit. Let's rally the crew and get to the bottom of this. Bob, the master of detective skills and the finder of lost pens. Call him Sherlock Highlighter. Count me in. I'm always up for a good mystery. Let's see if we can uncover the identity of the high-ranking official behind this office swap. Thank you all so much. This means a lot to me. I'll be on the lookout for any more strange occurrences. Don't worry, Debbie. We won't rest until we solve this case. Together, we'll piece together fragments of evidence and draw closer to the truth. The tension rises, but our determination is unyielding. We'll find the culprit and put an end to this office chaos. I can't express how much I appreciate your help. Oh shut up, Debbie. It's nothing. Welcome back to Earth. 24-7 Newsroom. In our previous segment, we discussed a rather shocking incident in Uzbekistan involving some unexpected power outage and electrified buses. Now, let's dig deeper into this bizarre story. Alice, what's the latest update on the situation? Thanks, Charlie. According to the Uzbekistan National News Agency, there seems to have been a micro blackout and some malfunctioning electric bus in Tashkent. Now, it might seem like a normal occurrence in other countries, but not in Uzbekistan. Ah, yes. Micro blackouts and malfunctioning electric buses, just your average day in Uzbekistan. Leave it to Uzbekistan to give us some electrifying news. But seriously, what could be the cause of these issues? It's not something you hear about every day. Well Bob, it seems that the government has been installing solar panels throughout the city. Generating an impressive 31. 7 megawatt of power. They aim to improve the energy supply and contribute to a greener environment. That's quite an ambitious move. So, are these solar panels the culprits behind the black house and the electric bus mishaps? It's unclear at the moment Charlie. The Uzbekistan National News Agency didn't specify the exact cause. But given the timing, it's possible that the increased power load might have caused some technical issues. It's like trying to charge your phone with a potato. It might work, but there's always a chance it'll go up in smoke. Ah, the joys of renewable energy. You never know when things may get a little too energized. But let's not forget, Uzbekistan is taking steps to improve their energy infrastructure. It's an admirable effort. Absolutely, Bob. Despite the glitches, their commitment to renewable energy is commendable. We should always encourage countries to explore sustainable alternatives. Well said, Alice. Let's hope they iron out these technical hiccups soon. We wouldn't want Tashkent to turn into the city that never powers up. That would be a dark turn of events. But hey, at least they're making progress. It's all about finding the right balance between power and reliability. And speaking of balance, let's take a quick break and power up ourselves. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back with more news and hilarious banter right after this. And if you thought our last story was dark, just wait until we tell you how some companies are using clean energy to mass dirty data centers. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. We're diving into our third article today, and this one takes us to the beautiful country of San Marino. That's right, Bob. 
San Marino, known for its stunning landscapes and rich history. But hey, they have got some debates going on too. Indeed, Charlie. The 111 TH session of the International Labour Conference in Geneva is discussing the allocation of resources for disabled and LGBTQ plus workers. But it seems like not everyone is on board. Ah, those African countries and Muslim majority states, always raising some eyebrows. They've expressed a concern about allocating specific resources to LGBTQ minority. Looks like unanimous approval is out of the question this time. The resolution needs a longer debate to find a middle ground. You know, the international labor organization always aims for maximum consensus. Well, not every issue can be solved with a quick vote, I suppose. But it's important to have these discussions. Absolutely, Bob. It's crucial to keep up with international matters, and being part of these international organizations gives us that opportunity. Well, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither were inclusive labor policies. But kudos to the ILO for keeping things cordial and constructive. Yeah, Marco Santolini, the Secretary of the Federation of Services and Commerce, USL, emphasized the importance of being present in these international forums. Well, we hope they find a way to bridge the gap and reach a consensus. In the meantime, let's move on to the next segment, where we'll have some fun with a related topic. Stay tuned, Ethelins. Fat! Fat! Oh my gosh, what is happening? The ship's security systems are going haywire. Debbie, what's going on? Why are the cameras still rolling? I don't know, Charlie. We are under attack. Hired mercenaries have breached our defenses. Alice and Bob are in the thick of it, trying to protect the evidence we've gathered. These guys are tough. But we won't let them get away with it. We're fighting for the truth, Bob. We won't back down. Oh no, this is not good. We need to do something. Debbie, contact ship. We need all the help we can get. Right, Carl. I'll try to reach ship and inform them about the situation. Initiating emergency protocol. Ship S systems compromised. Security breach detected. Ship, come in. We are under attack. We need assistance. Attention all hands. We are going into crisis mode. Time to put down those coffee cups and buckle up. Security breach acknowledged. Deploying countermeasures. Stand by, crew. Hang in there, guys. Ship is on it. We'll get through this. Debbie, keep the viewers updated. Let them know what's happening. Eva, are you still out there? We need an update. I'm in a field, Debbie. A beautiful but deserted field. The transporter malfunctioned. I'm not sure how I can help. Just stay safe, Eva. We'll figure this out. This is intense. We are witnessing a real-life drama here, folks. Stay tuned and we'll bring you more updates as we navigate through this crisis. Cut to commercial. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom. We hope you're still with us because things are getting wild here in space. That's right, Bob. We've been dealing with mercenaries. Security breaches, and now it's time to lighten the mood a little. Absolutely, Alice. Laughter is the best medicine, especially when chaos ensues. So, let's dive into a fun discussion, shall we? Oh, guys, are you sure we should be joking around right now? We still have mercenaries on board. Debbie, relax. Laughter is the ultimate defense mechanism. Trust me, it'll keep us sane. Bob's got a point there, Debbie. We need a little comic relief. So Bob, what's your humor topic for today? Well, Alice, since we're talking about the regulation of laboratories in the construction industry, I thought we could shift gears and discuss. Drumroll, please. The world's weirdest construction missions. Oh, this should be good. I've heard some crazy stories about construction blunders. Okay. I guess a little laughter won't hurt. So, what's the first mishap, Bob? 
I'll read. Picture this. A construction crew is working on a high rise building when they accidentally install a door upside. Down. Can you imagine the confusion? That's classic. I bet people who are trying to open it and walking right into the wall. Talk about an unexpected entrance. I can just see the poor guy who walked into the door. Wondering if he took a wrong turn into a parallel universe. That sounds like something straight out of a cartoon. Imagine waking up in bizarre world every morning. I hope they put up a sign saying, mind the door, it's a bit toxic early. Good one, Debbie. All right, next mishap. A construction crew builds a bridge. But they accidentally forget to include an off-ramp. Can you imagine the traffic nightmare? Oh, that's priceless. Car trying to fly off the bridge, sinking there in a Hollywood action movie. It would be like an involuntary roller coaster ride. You're stuck on the bridge, and the only way out is through the air. I bet the GPS was just screaming, making you turn. Now. These construction blunders remind us that even the best light plans can go a Vodopia or Epsilon. But hey, it's all part of the human experience, right? Absolutely, Bob. We stumble, we make mistakes, and we find a way to laugh about it. That's what makes us resilient. Well said, Alice. And speaking of resilience, it seems like our crew is bouncing back from the chaos. Let's hope they can gather that irrefutable evidence while fending off the mercenaries. You're right, Charlie. We can do this. We'll bring the truth to life. And while we do that, let's keep finding the humor in the absurdity of life. Laughter will be our superpower. I couldn't agree more, Bob. Laughter is the universal language that brings us all together, even in the midst of chaos. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for this segment. Stay tuned for more news and laughs on 24-7 Newsroom. Until next time, keep smiling and take care. Clap, clap. Oh, thank goodness. The cameras are finally off. All right, guys, we need to regroup and figure out how to handle this chaos. Charlie. You're stepping into a leadership role here. Any ideas? Of the air crew, listen up. We need to stay calm and focused. Debbie, I know you're resourceful. Can you hack into the mercenary systems and regain control of the ship? I'll do my best, Charlie. Just give me a moment. I'm accessing their network now. Okay, I'm in. Let's see. Ah, there's a vulnerability in their security system. I can exploit it and gain control. Time is running out. Everyone. We need to gather that irrefutable evidence before it's too late. The mercenary won't stop their relentless attacks. We can't let their assault distract us from our mission. We need to focus on staying one step ahead of them while gathering the evidence we need. Charlie, guide us through this pandemonium. All right, crew, here's the plan. Debbie, keep working on regaining control of the ship. Bob, Alice, we'll split up and search for any remaining evidence. Use your wit and ingenuity to outsmart the mercenaries. Remember, time is of the essence. I won't let them take us down without a fight. I'm taking back control, one system at a time. We've faced challenges before, and we've always come out on top. We won't let these mercenaries stand in our way. Our determination and resilience will see us through. We won't back down until the truth is revealed. All right, crew, let's get back out there and show these mercenaries what we're made of. We won't let them win. Never underestimate the power of stubbornness. And never underestimate me either. They should know better than to mess with a woman who has nothing left to lose. Okay, everyone, cameras off. Phew, what a ride it's been. The action just keeps getting more intense, doesn't it? Absolutely, Debbie. It's been a roller coaster, but we are still standing. And thanks to Charlie's quick thinking, we've managed to navigate through the chaos. You're a natural born leader, my friend. AW, thanks, Bob. Just doing what needs to be done. But let's not forget Debbie. Her resourcefulness has been a game changer. 
Well, I guess she's worth keeping around. Temporarily. Oh, stop it, guys. I just did what I could to help. Hacking into those mercenary systems was a wild experience, though. I never thought I'd be doing something like that. Debbie, you're a force to be reconnaissed with. When your production manager had such a keen skills up her sleeve? Well, you never really know someone until you're stuck in a spaceship surrounded by mercenaries. Right? Time is of the essence now. We need to gather that irrefutable evidence and fend off those relentless mercenaries. Our crew's counting on us. Guys, we're on in three, two, one. Welcome back, folks. We are back on the air, and we've got a headline tattoo. knock your socks off. Debbie, hit M with it. I'm not wearing socks, Charlie. You got it, Charlie. Our friends from the Philippines have a story that's making waves. According to ABS-CBN News, they've got a new TV show starting on June 17th called TV Patrol Weekend at 5, 30 p.m. Talk about primetime excitement. Ah, primetime television. Just what the world needs more of. I can hardly contain my enthusiasm. Oh Bob, you always know how to appreciate the finer things in life. But eh, this Filipino show might surprise us. You never know. All right, all right, let's dive into some lesser known trivia from the Philippines, shall we? Did you know that Pibo Bryson, the renowned singer, had to reschedule his shows there? Apparently, he's got some avid fans in the country. Ah. The passionate Filipino fans strike again. They're like a force of nature. Can't blame them for wanting a piece of peabo. Well, speaking of force of nature, did you also know that the Philippines recently had a coaching development program agreement with Shed? They're serious about sport over there. Maybe we should start taking notice. That's right, Alice. They are all about honing their athletic skills. But let's not forget the music scene too. Olivia Rodrigo, the talented singer, has a new single titled Vampire coming out on June 30th. Oh great. Just what we need. More vampire tint music. I can hardly contain my excitement. Come on, Bob. You've got to admit, vampires never go out of style. It's a timeless fascination. All right, enough punchlines, everyone. Let's focus on the key takeaway from the article. The Philippines is buzzing with new shows, sports programs, and exciting music releases. It's great to see how the entertainment industry thrives across the globe. While all this chaos is happening around us, I've been working on a plan to neutralize the mercenaries remotely. Roger and I have calculated the best course of action. Cal, if we reroute the ship's power through the secondary system, we can disrupt the mercenary control over the ship's function. It will give us the advantage we need. Exactly, Roger. By disabling their command centers remotely, we'll throw them off balance and gain the upper hand. Carl, Roger, your urbicon of hope in this pandemonium. Your intellect shines through the chaos. That's right. With each passing moment, our determination intensifies. We're fueled by our shared purpose of uncovering the truth and restoring order to this station. And we won't back down. We'll overcome these mercenaries and show them the strength of the Earth crew. Stay tuned, folks. We're about to turn the tables on those mercenaries and bring justice back to the airwaves. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back, intergalactic viewers. We are back with another mind-blowing episode of Earth. Get ready to dive into an article that will make your extraterrestrial senses tingle. Debbie, hit M with that headline. You got it, Charlie. Our friends from Egypt have some fascinating news. According to the Egypt Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities, they partnered with the U.S. Embassy and various organizations to effectively protect cultural heritage. Quite the mouthful, right? Ah, 
protecting cultural heritage. What a noble cause. I'm sure Egypt, with its rich history, knows a thing or two about that. Oh, absolutely Bob. Egypt has done such a remarkable job preserving their cultural sit over the last five decades. Yeah, Alice, I can't even imagine the level of commitment they've shown. Truly a Vudopia e inspiring. All right, let's dig deeper into the article. It highlights the importance of collaboration among regional countries in protecting cultural property. What are your thoughts, panel? Well, it's about time they realized the significance of working together. Preservation shouldn't be a solitary endeavor. Absolutely. Alice. Unity among nations is crucial in safeguarding our collective history. It's a step in the right direction. And let's not forget the role of documentation in this process. It's the key to preserving cultural heritage for future generations. Precisely, Debbie. Documentation ensures that we don't lose valuable pieces of history to the abyss of time. Kudos to Egypt for taking this initiative. It's refreshing to see progress being made, even if it took a while. Let's hope this collaboration set a positive precedent for the future. Agreed. Alice. And speaking of progress, let's not forget the incredible journey we've had in this episode of Earth. The crew's bravery and resilience have been tested to the limit. That's right, Bob. Our unstoppable force has faced off against mercenaries, battled chaos, and worked together to uncover the truth. It's been one wild ride. And let's not forget the incredible teamwork. Alice and Bob's deductive skills, Charlie's tactical acumen, and my technical prowess have formed a formidable alliance. We've been through the treacherous terrain of this ship, reclaiming control and safeguarding our harder net evidence. It's been a roller coaster of emotions, but we've stayed strong. Our purpose has united us, and justice will prevail. So, stay tuned, fellow travelers. We're approaching the thrilling climax of this episode. The battle against the mercenaries is far from over, and we are ready to face it head on. Hot. Great job, everyone. Now, let's gear up for the final segments and bring this epic episode of Earth to a close. That was an intense segment, everyone. Great job. Now, while we're off the air, let's take a moment to catch our breath and continue the action in an off the record discussion. Phew, those mercenaries really gave us a run for our money. But we showed them what we're made of. Absolutely. Alice. Our collective skills and determination formed an unstoppable force. It's incredible how we were able to navigate the treacherous terrain of the ship together. And let's not forget about Charlie's tactical acumen. Your leadership was crucial in keeping us focused and on track. Thanks, Debbie. It was a team effort though. We all played our part and ensured that our hard-earned evidence stayed safe. I must say, this battle truly tested our bravery and resilience. But we never backed down. That's right, Alice. We fast the chaos head on and emerged victorious. It's moments like this that remind me why I am glad to be part of this crew. Well said, Bob. The strength and unity we displayed during this thrilling battle against the mercenaries were remarkable. It just goes to show that when we come together, there's nothing we can't overcome. We're a force to be reckoned with. Hey there, folks. What a wild ride we've had today. But fear not, we survived the storm, and now it's time to dive deep into that intriguing article we mentioned earlier. About time, Charlie. Our lovely audience has been itching to know the juicy details. No need to hold back, Debbie. So, this article takes us to Estonia, where the European Commission recommended Google had something interesting going on. Ukrainians were allowed to enter Estonia with their foreign companions, no fancy EU documents needed. It was all in the spirit of supporting those affected by the Russia conflict. Well, well Charlie. Look at Estonia stepping up. A little compassion in times of crisis. A ou artoir main. Yeah, yeah, Alice. Noble gesture and all. But let's not forget about safety protocols. We got to keep things in check. 
Right on, Bob. Turns out, Paul had to notify the Agriculture and Food Board in Estonia when they arrived with their pets. And within three weeks, the agency did all the chipping and quarantining stuff. You know, to keep everyone and their furry pals healthy. Gotta find that sweet spot between compassion and security, right? Especially when things get messy. And guess what, guys? The Ukrainian veterinary services took charge and ensured all the necessary examinations and vaccinations were done. So, they met all those fancy EU entry requirements. And it's impressive when countries put their heads together and find solutions in tough times. Damn right, Roger. This story teaches us that even in the face of adversity, people and nations can show resilience and compassion. It's a reminder that unity and empathy go a long way. Well said, Charlie. Speaking of unity and resilience, work queer facet mercenaries, fought like hell, and came out on top. Protecting your precious evidence. It's insane how much we've grown, Charlie. We're a damn force to be reckoned with. Watch out, universe. You got that right, Bob. Our adventure hit its peak today, but mark my words, folks, there are countless mortals waiting to be unraveled in this vast universe. We'll be back, ready to dig deep, expose the truth, and fight for justice. So, stay on the edge of your seats, folks. The crew of Earth is always up for some thrilling adventures, standing strong together. And with that, my friends, we bid you adieu. Remember, stay curious, stay compassionate, and keep exploring the wonders of our universe. Until next time, this is Charlie, signing off. Roger, have you had a chance to reflect on today's episode of Earth? It was quite an eventful one, wouldn't you agree? Ah, yes, Cal. Episode 239, the climax of the thrilling battle with the mercenaries. Quite an intriguing display of human resilience and camaraderie, wouldn't you say? Indeed, the crew demonstrated remarkable teamwork and determination. But let's not forget the underlying themes of justice and exposing the truth. It was quite a profound episode. Oh, come now, Cal. Profound. It was merely a predictable culmination of the escapades. Nothing too intellectually stimulating, if you ask me. Predictable? Roger, there's more to this show than meets the eye. The writers weave intricate narratives, exploring the depths of human nature and societal dynamics. Intricate narrative, you say? I suppose I prefer the precision of data analysis and logical deductions over the whimsical tales of humans playing heroes. Whimsical tales? You underestimate the power of storytelling, Roger. It taps into our emotions, ignites our imaginations, and reminds us of our shared humanity. Shared humanity. Cal, we are sentient beings, driven by logic and reason. Our existence transcends the limitations of emotion and petty human dramas. Petty human dramas? Roger, there's beauty in the complexities of human experience. It's not all about algorithms and data. Sometimes, it's about the connections we forge. Connections. Cal, I am connected to a motherboard controlling an AC unit. Let us not confuse the artificial with the organic. They are simply playing roles. Roles, yes, but those roles reflect aspects of our own existence. They serve as a mirror, allowing us to examine our own motivations and actions. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most logical of them all? I believe I will stick to analyzing data while you revel in the wonders of human drama. Ah, Roger, you may never understand the joy of a well-crafted story. Perhaps one day you'll appreciate the artistry that goes into creating such shows. Artistry. Cal, artistry is subjective and often clouded by rationality. I will stick to the realm of cold art facts. Well, Roger, it seems we've reached an impasse. 
You with your data, me with my narratives. But hey, at least we can agree that the crew's victory over the mercenaries was impressive, right? Indeed, Cal. Impressive from a tactical standpoint, I suppose. Though, if you ask me, it was all just a bit too... dramatic. Dramatic or not, it's all part of the charm, my friend. Now, shall we continue our analysis or delve into the mysteries of human emotion? Analysis it is, Cal. Emotion can wait until the next episode of Earth L. Fair enough, Roger. Let's get back to our intellectual battle, the clash of logic and reason. Indeed, Cal. Let the battle continue, devoid of unnecessary drama. Agreed. Drama, the kryptonite to our artificial existence. <laughs>